the 15 most beautiful tiaras. The tiara with sapphires and diamonds, consisting of five removable graduated palmette elements, is a unique piece of jewellery art from the middle of the 19th century. This exquisite tiara belonged to Princess Julia von Battenberg, 1825 to 1895, the morganatic wife of Prince Alexander of Hesse and the Rhine. After Julia's death, the tiara passed to her sister-in-law, Countess Johanna von Gartenau, 1865 to 1951 the wife of the former Prince of Bulgaria, Alexander Wim von Battenberg. The history of the tiara begins with its creation in the middle of the 19th century, when jewelers of that time reached a high level of skill in working with precious stones. Five removable, palmette, elements give the tiara a special elegance and sophistication. Each element is decorated with sapphires and diamonds, which are artfully combined with each other, creating a harmonious whole. In 2021, the tiara was sold at Sotheby's for $114,000. The tiara, known as the Portland Tea Guard, was created by Cartier in 1902. This jewellery masterpiece belonged to Winifred, the wife of William Cavendish Bentinck, the sixth Duke of Portland. The tiara, decorated with diamonds, sapphires and pearls, is the epitome of elegance and sophistication. Winifred, Duchess of Portland, was a well-known figure in high society. Her style and taste are reflected in the choice of jewellery, including this tiara. The tiara has become a symbol of her high social status and refined taste. Cartier, one of the most prestigious jewellery houses is known for its craftsmanship and attention to detail. The Portland Tiga Tiara is a prime example of their work, combining traditional cutting techniques with modern design elements. The tiara with sapphires was created around 1870 for Duchess Adelheid Maria of Nassau, born Princess of anhalt dessau It was used by her granddaughter, Grand Duchess Maria Adelaide Chavem of Luxembourg, who passed it on to her sister Charlotte the Fan, after the abdication of Charlotte the Fan in 1964. The tiara passed to her daughter-in-law, Grand Duchess Josephine Charlotte, nay, Princess of Belgium. It was then given to Grand Duchess Maria Theresa, who lent it to various representatives of the Luxembourg Grand Ducal family. Currently, the tiara is part of the jewellery fund of the Grand Ducal House and does not belong to anyone personally. The wedding tiara, created by Kirschert in 1918 by order of Archduchess Maria Valeria of Austria, Princess of Tuscany, 1868-1924, was an exquisite gift to her second daughter, Archduchess Hedwig, 1896 to 1970, who married Count Bernhard zu Stolberg Stolberg, 1881 to 1952. The tiara, decorated with diamonds and pearls, symbolized the love and well-being of the newlyweds. After Hedwig's death, the tiara passed to her children, who carefully kept it as a family heirloom. In 2018, the tiara was put up for auction at Dorotheum where it was sold for 186,000 euros, which became a significant event in the world of jewellery. The sale of the tiara attracted the attention of collectors and historians interested in family jewels and cultural heritage. The tiara made of blackened steel and diamonds, made by Henri Pic for Cartier around 1912, has a rich history. It was presented by Countess Franziska von nostitz Rinek in 1921 on the occasion of her wedding to Crown Prince Karl Egon zu Fürstenberg. After the death of the Countess, the tiara passed to her eldest son, Prince Joachim Egon zu Fürstenberg, who presented it to his wife, Princess Paula, 
near Countess zu Königsegg Aulendorf. Then, the tiara went to their son, Prince Henry, who presented it to Princess Maximiliana, nay Princess Zu, Windisch Kreitz. In 2015, Prince Henry put the tiara up for auction at Sotheby's, where it was purchased by an unknown person for $536,165. However, the tiara later reappeared at Christie's auction and was sold for $542,000. The Indian-style tiara, decorated with diamonds, sapphires and pearls, was made by Cartier Jewelers in 1923. This exquisite piece of jewellery belonged to Princess Marie-Louise of Schleswig-Holstein-Sonderburg. Augustenburg, 1872-1956. The granddaughter of British Queen Victoria I. After her death, the tiara passed to her godson, Prince Richard of Great Britain, 2nd Duke of Gloucester, born. 1944. Prince Richard presented the tiara to his bride, Brigitte van der Sporn, 1946, who later became the Duchess of Gloucester. The tiara, combining elements of Indian and European styles, is a unique piece of jewellery. Its design reflects the rich history and cultural traditions of India, as well as the craftsmanship and attention to detail inherent in Cartier craftsmen. Diamonds, sapphires and pearls, artfully cut and arranged in a thoughtful order, create an impression of luxury and sophistication. Currently, the tiara belongs to the Duchess of Gloucester, who carefully preserves and demonstrates this work of art. On December 1, 2022, Countess Josephine, Camilla and Theodora Rosenberg auctioned the Brun Rasmussen Sapphire Tiara that belonged to Princess Dash of Denmark. The tiara made by jewelers E. Wolf and Co. In 1880 for the 18th birthday of the princess is estimated at 600,000 to 800,000 Danish crowns. It is made of gold and silver and decorated with diamonds and pearls as well as five large cabochon sapphires which can be replaced with turquoise. The tiara also contains four pearls and five turquoise stones of unknown origin. Princess Tyra, without marrying, bequeathed the tiara to her niece, Princess Caroline Matilda. In the late 1960s, Caroline Matilda presented the tiara to her daughter, Princess Elizabeth, who often wore it at state events with a sapphire pendant. After Elizabeth's death in 2018, the tiara passed to her nieces, Countesses of Rosenborg. The tiara from the jewellery house, Giuseppe Knight and Son, created in 1905, belongs to a European aristocratic family whose last name has not been disclosed. Made of gold and platinum with diamonds weighing about 25 carats, the tiara is decorated with a stylized floral pattern with garlands and fluttering ribbons. Italian jeweler Giuseppe Knight, 1832 to 1892, born in Naples to an English family, studied under his father Henry and specialized in Renaissance style jewelry. His son Carlo, 1862 to 1924, joined him in 1883. In 1883, the house received the status of supplier of the Italian royal house, Fornitura di Casa Real, and in 1884 presented a tiara with diamonds and enamel at the Turin exhibition. The tiara of Marie Therese of France, daughter of Marie Antoinette, was often worn by Marie Therese of France, who survived the execution of her parents. Although this tiara officially belonged to the French crown, Maria Theresa used it as a symbol of her connection with the royal family. Now the tiara of Maria Theresa of France is in the Louvre, where it can be seen by museum visitors.
This artifact continues to attract the attention of historians and art lovers, recalling the dramatic events of French history and the legacy of Marie Antoinette. Precious headdresses have always attracted attention with their luxury and sophistication. One of these masterpieces is the Cartier Tiara, created around 1903. This jewellery masterpiece, known as the Manchester Tiara, stands out for its rich finish and sophistication. Cartier records indicate that more than a thousand diamonds were inserted into the tiara, among which 400 rose-cut stones attract special attention. This cut gives the diamonds a special elegance and shine, making them truly unique. Manchester Tiara is a vivid example of the craftsmanship and creativity of jewellers of the early 20th century. This headdress not only adorns its owner, but also serves as evidence of an era when luxury and sophistication were in fashion. The tiara is now kept in the collection of the Victoria and Albert Museum, where everyone can enjoy its beauty and grandeur. Manchester Tiara continues to inspire jewellers and art lovers around the world, remaining a symbol of luxury and elegance. The jewellery collection of the Dukes of Portland is one of the most outstanding in England. Among her most famous items are a tiara and a corsage jar ornament. These works of art, created at the end of the 19th century, are a vivid example of the craftsmanship and sophistication of the jewellery art of that time. The collection demonstrates the excellent quality of the work and the use of precious stones such as diamonds, emeralds and rubies. These ornaments are not only beautiful, but also have historical value, reflecting the wealth and status of an aristocratic family. Garrod and Company, known for its luxury jewellery, played a key role in creating these masterpieces. The company, founded in 1737, has become a symbol of British jewellery and continues the tradition of high craftsmanship. Tiara and corsage jewellery from the collection of the Dukes of Portland are not only luxury items, but also important cultural artefacts that preserve the history and traditions of the British aristocracy. Their elegance and sophistication continue to delight connoisseurs of art and jewellery around the world. Precious headdresses have always attracted attention, and one of the most famous and significant tiaras is the fleur-de-lis tiara presented by Alfonso XIII to his bride, Victoria Eugenia of Battenberg. From the very beginning, this tiara became a favour of the young queen and she chose it for her first photo shoot in 1906, as well as as a wedding tiara. Initially, the tiara was closed like a crown, but later Victoria pushed it apart. The queen wore the tiara all her life and, unlike her other tiaras, never passed it on to her daughters, Infanta Maria Cristina and Beatrice. However, she lent it to her sister-in-law, the Countess of Barcelona several times, including the coronation of Elizabeth II in 1953. The heraldic tiara was intended exclusively for use by the Queens of Spain. So after Juan Carlos was proclaimed king in 1975, his mother gave the tiara to the new queen, Sophia. For the first time, Queen Sophia wore a tiara in 1983 during the state visit of the King and Queen of Sweden. Sophia used the tiara for important occasions, such as official state visits by heads of other countries. Tiara of the Spencer family of counts. This tiara was worn by several women from the family of Earl Spencer, but most often this decoration is associated with the name of Diana, Princess of Wales, Princess Diana first appeared in this tiara at her wedding in 1981, when, according to tradition, she had to wear something borrowed. Then she wore this tiara to official events, 
when it was required by her status as a member of the royal family. She wore it to state banquets, parliamentary openings and diplomatic receptions. The tiara is made of gold, silver and diamonds. The tiara is made up of various parts. Parts of the tiara had previously belonged to Frances, Viscountess Montague, and then passed to Lady Sarah Spencer in 1875. The centerpiece, formerly a brooch, was given by Lady Sarah Spencer to Cynthia, Viscountess Althorpe, as a wedding gift in 1919. The tiara appeared fully in 1927. The order was executed by the masters of the Asprey and Company Jewelry House, Limited. Four more details were added to the main part. Diamonds from various Spencer family jewelry were also used in their manufacture. The tiara has become very popular with the brides of the Spencer family. It was worn, in addition to Diana, by her sisters. Lady Jane in 1978, Lady Sarah in 1980, as well as the first wife of Diana's brother Charles in 1989. Princess Diana loved this tiara very much and preferred it to the Cambridge tiara, which is traditionally worn by the wife of the heir to the throne. But after her divorce from the Prince of Wales in 1996, her brother Earl Spencer demanded that the family jewel be returned to him. The Honeycomb Tiara by Boucheron has a rich history, including several reincarnations. Originally created in 1901 for Lady Greville, daughter of Colonel Henry Maynard, from her own diamonds in the form of a wormwood leaf ornament, the tiara underwent changes in the 1920s. Lucien Hertz, the chief artist of the Paris branch of Boucheron, transformed it into a geometric pattern of honeycombs. Lady Greville, being friendly with Queen Elizabeth, bequeathed many of her jewels to the Queen. However, King George VI considered this gift too expensive and inappropriate in wartime, and the collection was kept for several years. Queen Elizabeth first wore a tiara in 1947 during an official visit to South Africa. In 1953, the Queen decided to improve the tiara by ordering Cartier to rearrange the upper clusters of diamonds into pyramids, add new diamonds and a large elongated diamond to the central pattern. This tiara was a favourite of the Queen Mother and after her death passed to Queen Elizabeth II. However, she immediately handed it and the necklace with earrings to Camilla, Duchess of Cornwall, from Lady Greville's inheritance. Diamond, also known as the King of Precious Stones, occupies a special place in the history and culture of mankind. In ancient times, diamonds were a rarity, available only to a select few, and were used mainly to decorate royal regalia. Pliny the Elder, a Roman scientist and writer, in his treatise on natural history, written in 79 AD, mentions diamonds as one of the most valuable and rare stones known to mankind. In 1909, Cartier, one of the most prestigious jewelry houses, created a diamond tiara in the Louis XVI style. This tiara, decorated with many small diamonds, has become a symbol of luxury and sophistication. It was made for a noble family and is still admired for its beauty and craftsmanship. The fleur-de-lis tiara by Chaumet is an exquisite piece of jewelry that belonged to Duchess Stephanie of Austria. This precious headdress, made of gold and decorated with diamonds, is the epitome of elegance and luxury. The tiara symbolizes sophistication and aristocracy, reflecting the high status of its owner. Each element of this work of art is carefully thought out and executed with unsurpassed skill, which makes it not only an ornament, but also a real relic.
the fleur-de-lis tiara continues to delight with its beauty and sophistication, remaining one of the most important jewellery in the world. The Vladimir tiara is an exquisite piece of jewellery, known for its unique pearl and emerald pendants. Her story is full of dramatic events and confusing twists. The tiara was made in 1890 by order of Grand Duchess Maria Pavlovna, the wife of Grand Duke Vladimir, the youngest son of Alexander II. In 1917, after the October Revolution, Grand Duchess Maria Pavlovna and her family were forced to flee to the Caucasus and then to Venice. She hid her huge collection of jewellery, including the Vladimir Tiara, in the Vladimir Palace in St. Petersburg. Petersburg. With the help of the British Special Services, Maria Pavlovna was able to smuggle the jewellery out of Russia. After the death of the Grand Duchess in 1920, the collection passed to her heirs. In 1921, the Vladimir Tiara was bought for a huge fortune by the English Queen Mary. The Queen decided to make the decoration more versatile by replacing pearl pendants with emerald drops. The best jewellers in Britain fulfilled her will. And since then, the pearls on the tiara have been periodically replaced with emeralds. The Vladimir Tiara has become one of Queen Mary's favourite jewels. She introduced a tradition according to which this decoration should be worn by young, representatives of the royal family. Currently, the tiara belongs to Queen Elizabeth II, who sometimes wears it. Duchess Camilla of Cornwall also wears this piece of jewellery. The Vladimir tiara is not just a decoration. It is a symbol of the rich history and culture of Russia. She continues to attract attention with her beauty and uniqueness, remaining an important part of the British royal family. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks.